In this video we're going to derive the cosine rule. Now don't worry too much about memorising this, what matters is that you've seen it derived once and if you ever need to see the derivation again you know where to go to find it. So let's start off with a circle and we'll have an x and a y axis. We'll pick a point outside that circle and we'll call it c, 0. We're going to now draw a triangle and you can see the triangle being drawn now. And this is not a right angle triangle. This angle is greater than a right angle and both these angles are less. Now we'll give our angles and our lengths some names. Now the angles are going to have large letters and the lengths will have small letters. So we'll start off with this large angle here and we'll call that angle A. The length opposite that angle we'll call small a. And we'll call this length here B and we'll call this length here C. Now this point here is going to be given by the x coordinate which is going to be b cos a and the y coordinate which is going to be b sin a. Now you'll have seen this from your previous videos on trigonometry so convince yourself that the x coordinate is given by b cos a and the y coordinate is given by b sin a where a is this large angle. Now what we're interested in doing here is finding the distance from this point here to this point here. Now we can call this point 1 and we can call this point 2. So this will be x1, y1 and this will be x2, y2. And we can use the distance formula in order to find the distance between those two points. So the distance formula is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if we put our values in for our x1, x2 and y1, y2, then we're going to have the square root of, well the x2 is going to be the b cos a, which is this distance along to here, and the x1 is going to be the distance along to the point C. And we're going to have our y2, which is going to be the height up here, which is b sine a, and the height of y1, which is just the height 0. So whenever we multiply out the brackets, you can see that we can square the whole side here, and it gets rid of the square root, but if we square this side, we must square this side. So we get the a squared. And then of course we have to multiply out the brackets. Now to multiply out the brackets, we're going to end up with b squared cos squared a minus the 2bc cos a plus the c squared. And that's from multiplying out this bracket. And when we multiply out this bracket, we'll get our b squared sine squared a. Now we can gather like terms here. So if we take out the b squared from this term here and the b squared from this term here, we're going to have the b squared cos squared a plus sine squared a. And we can leave the rest of it as it is, c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now, this is an identity. Cos squared a plus sine squared a gives us a value of 1. So, whenever we cancel this out, we're simply going to be left with the a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And I'll just write that out for you again. So, this is the cosine rule here. So do you really need to memorise a derivation? Well, not really. It's not the kind of thing that I would tend to keep in my head. What matters is that you've seen the derivation once 
and that you work through the derivation and you understand it. And then afterwards, if you need to find the derivation, you know where it is and you can understand it again very quickly. What matters here is to know that what the equation does for us. And that is that if we are given two lengths of a non-right angle triangle and the angle in between those lengths, then we can find the third length of the triangle. So in this instance here, we're given length B and length C and the angle in between which is A. And this allows us to find the length of A. Alternatively, you could have it in the other sense. You could have the length B and the length A, and you could have this angle in between. And this would allow you to find this length C. Alternatively, you could have the length A and the length C and the angle in between, and that will allow you to find the length B. Also, you can rearrange this equation such that you can find the angle A if you're given all three lengths A, B and C. But we will look at that in an example. So let's start off with this triangle. And let's say we're given this angle here and it's 25 degrees. And we're also given the two lengths which generate this angle. So we have the length 15, which is this length here, and the length 23, which is this length here. Now we know that we can use the cosine rule because we're given the two lengths and the angle in between. And if, if we have those pieces of information, then we can find the length which is opposite this angle. And we can call this length, say, A. Now from our cosine rule, we can find this length A because we're going to have the length A squared is going to be equal to the length b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So we can say that the length a is going to equal to b squared plus c squared. So which one's b and which one's c? Well, it doesn't matter. We can call one or the other. So let's say we call this length here b and we call this length here c, then we're going to have b squared will be 15 squared plus c squared, which will be 23 squared, minus 2 times b, which is 15, times c, which is 23, times cos of the angle in between, which is 25 degrees. So that's going to give us the value of a squared, so in order to get the value of A, we just take the square root of this entire thing. So we're going to have the square root of this. Now if we put this into the calculator, let's see what result we get. So we will put our values in of the square root of 15, which is going to be squared plus 23, which is going to be squared, minus 2 times the 15, times the 23, times the cosine. Now remember, you have to make sure you're in degrees. The cosine of 25 degrees, and we'll close the brackets off, and we'll get the answer, which is 11.5. Three, four. So that's equal to 11.34. So this length here will be 11.34.